We did it! We saw Avengers Endgame on Saturday. It's Monday, April 29th, and boy, it, it really blew me away. I, I was in and out of crying for the duration of the three hours of Avengers Endgame. And uh, I want to make this video to share my reactions to the film, but also to address the predictions that I made a couple days ago, what I got right, but a lot of what I got wrong. So if you don't want to know uh, anything about the movie, you need to click away right now. Fair warning, lots of spoilers. All right, you ready? Have you seen the movie yet? Come back? Okay, great. Uh, so we saw the film on Saturday. I was part of a friend's birthday celebration. We actually took a really cool picture of our group, which you can see on my Instagram page in the description below. And I'm just going to start off, let's start off by going over some of the things that I got right and wrong in my predictions. So I said that Iron Man and Pepper will get married and have a kid, but it was going to be at the end of the film. So right off the bat, the thing that almost single-handedly derailed most of my predictions, and I assume many expectations, was five years later. And that, that's a really brilliant move because I don't think anyone could have predicted that. And it really brings up a lot of new questions that uh, we didn't even cross my mind. So I'm actually happy to report that I think I, I think it's fair to say that I got that right. Uh, they did get married. They did have a kid. Uh, and that, that whole thing really played a bigger role than I ever expected. But the next prediction I had was Captain America dies. And... While he doesn't technically die, they close the chapter on his journey. He, you see him at the end of the film, and I think it's honestly brilliant how they close that chapter uh, by finding a way to give him a happy ending, only through the power of a time heist. And the five years later, do we find a way to give Cap a happy ending? And that that's fantastic. I think a great job. What I got right was that both Iron Man and Cap would be resolved. What I didn't get right was who would die. And I think what helps is that we see that Iron Man had another five years to have a child and to be with Pepper. And so even though he makes the ultimate sacrifice play, which uh, I mentioned before uh, was something Cap says in the first Avengers, he also has his happy ending before he, he gives it all to, to save everyone. And I think starting an ending with Iron Man and with Captain America, such a smart choice for this film. you got a lot of characters, but, but putting them in the center of this era, it makes so much sense, um, especially coming off of Civil War, because they, they just have the most character development over the last decade. They, you know, uh, they've been in almost half the movies, honestly. So, uh, great decision there. I said that the movie's about bringing the Avengers together, that it wasn't really going to be about defeating Thanos. I was clearly wrong. Again, it didn't occur to me that time travel was possible. And so, bringing Thanos back, but this time, basically as a completely derailed sociopath, I think actually was really cool. I actually really liked seeing... Thanos going from kind of understandable, kind of ha kind of weird sort of villain in the first film where he actually had a point of view to just full on I want to destroy the whole universe in this one. And it worked though. We needed to see the beginning of Thanos' arc in Infinity War to make his reality in this film believable and not just so uh, like a two-dimensional villain, I want to kill everyone kind of thing. And it really worked and I was intimidated the whole time, especially when Thanos actually gets that glove on, you think it's going to happen again. You're having like uh, flashbacks to Infinity War. Uh, I said uh, Thanos will sacrifice them to s himself to save Gamora. Totally wrong. Uh, instead what we got was one of the things I would say the most surprising thing of in the film, I thought a lot about the film, and for me the most surprising thing is the death of Black Widow. And I think I just didn't see it coming. Uh, you think everyone's going to have a happy ending. You think maybe her and Bruce, they set that up. And yet, it, it I really appreciate the fact that it is pretty definitive 
actually leads me to another prediction. Um, I know that they're developing a Black Widow movie, but I actually really believe that that's going to be kind of a prequel kind of thing. It's going to be about her her past and stuff. I don't think uh, she's coming back. I don't think they should bring her back because, you know, if they start bringing resurrecting characters, you lessen the impact of this film. So I'm saying it here f right now. They should not bring back w Widow back. Nothing stopping them from exploring her past self, which I think would be a cool thing for uh, Sarah Latrell Hansen to play anyway. That'd be really cool to see that whole thing. Um, I said Thor will get back together with Natalie Portman. Totally wrong. Uh, Thor uh, instead goes his own way. Again, part of the five-year jump that I didn't see coming, but uh, it's okay. Natalie Portman was in the film. Jane is technically in the movie, so I think I got it kind of right, but not completely right. And there's nothing stopping them from getting back together someday. But uh, turns out, sounds like uh, Chris Hemsworth might be in some more movies. So, uh, with Guardians, I don't know. Uh, then we, uh, one of my other predictions was that uh, the new team leader would be Captain Marvel. And I'm actually really glad that Captain Marvel was not a centerpiece of this film. Yes, she comes in, she blows up a, a ship and stuff, and does some fun stuff, but she's not developed enough yet. She just doesn't have the history. And so if she had just sort of been this deus ex machina that comes down from literally, like, space slash heaven to just save the day, I don't think that would have worked either. So um, she'll probably be involved in the, the next series of films, but honestly, I think it'll boil down to who's the strongest of the, the next generation of characters. So we don't know yet. And then finally, my last prediction was that there was going to either be no cutscene. When I said cutscene, I meant post credit scene. Or it was going to be something very tasteful. And I'm happy to say I at least got that right. There was no uh, visual cutscene. Uh, there's just, you just hear the clanking of Tony, Tony Stark uh, making his original Iron Man suit in the cave. Which sounds like it's a sound bite that's lifted directly from Iron Man 1 and you know coming full circle and I remember in 2008 seeing the first Iron Man and I actually didn't really wasn't interested in going I, I think at the time I even said I am not interested in superhero movies anymore and then my sister really wanted to go and she's always sort of been a trendsetter for me at least and we walked into the theater and I was like wow this is a really good film and little did I know, here we are, 11 years later. And so I think, for me, seeing such a ludicrous, like, number of years pass and seeing how much I've changed in this, this amount of time was a really cathartic moment for me. Um, just sort of reflecting on how I've changed over the last decade. Uh, I just wanted to address a couple of other things. Some cr criticisms I've heard so far has been that maybe the film's too long, it's too slow, that the first half's not uh, exciting enough, or, you know, people thought it would be shorter. I gotta be honest, the film needs that time for emotional development. The truth is, what makes the last battle, what makes the whole movie great, is you need time with these characters to care about them. Yes, we've seen it in previous films, we care about them, but Marvel and the Russo brothers took realized that if you truly were going to kill off half the population, you need time to tease that out, to really make us feel the, the heartbreak, the sadness, the loss. And only through seeing and feeling all of this loss do we get and we go from being so depressed to being absolutely triumphant, overjoyed towards the end of the movie. And so seeing those highs and lows, that's critical to any film. Uh, honestly, the second half is just battles without the setup of the first half. So great. I love how they did that. Um, I th and, and frankly, this is one of the rare occasions where the movie is completely justified in spending so much time with these characters. This was like a delicious, you know... Uh, buffet of characters and I would not want anything that I saw on the screen cut. Uh, I don't care. That was the point of this. This, you know, this epic, over-the-top, everything you could ever want, smorgasbord of delicious uh, characters. I don't know 
if you would want to cut something, or I don't know. Uh, I think length is totally justified. I think the five years later really shows the real cost. And I think that's what's amazing is that they didn't want to just find a way to just reverse time and like clean everything up and everything's going to be a nice little bow. Uh, everything is as it was before Thanos. No. And if they're anything like I know they are, I'm sure that this, this whole saga, Endgame, the repercussions from Endgame will ripple out into uh, the other films to come, and that's more plot threads that they can tug on. And I will just say this, this was the big one. Marvel really went for it. Uh, I, I know that they know that they can't top this. They didn't pull any punches. They, they didn't say, oh, we're going to save something for next time. Like, they said, okay, we're all in. Every character that we can is go that's justified in this film is going to be in there. And we'll go to something in the future, but um, I really like that. I really like the fact that this, honestly, is probably going to be their biggest epic. Who knows? Maybe they'll do it again in another 10 years. But in terms of the, the detail, in terms of having just a, a run of films where not, nothing was really bad, per se, everything was above board, and the standards so insanely high, um, I really think it's just an unprecedented cinematic achievement, and I, I gotta give them props. So I hope that you related to some of my ideas, and if you didn't, leave those in the comments, and I'd love to continue discussing that kind of stuff. I have a couple of other films on my channel, and we're actually going to be rolling out some other really fun videos. I'd love to make more of these just vlog style videos uh, without uh, toiling over editing too much and uh, we'll just see where we go from here. Thanks for staying tuned and see you next time. Bye!